Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're covering a very common question. In fact, the most popular question that I see get asked on the Coditioning Discord and from users on the Coditioning platform. And it's just this, this question is solving, you know, 50, 100, 150 lead code questions enough. And what people are usually trying to get at is how interview ready are they? Like, are they interview ready? That's really the question they should be asking, but that's kind of where they're getting to. So the first thing I'll do before I actually answer that question is just point out what your North Star should be when you're assessing your interview readiness. So you're assessing your knowledge. Like, do you know what things are? Do you know how to apply this knowledge? And the most important one is, do you know when to apply it? Like, does your brain actually recognize that so-and-so concepts are relevant? Very important, but not gonna dive into that in this video, but that's something you should cover your interviewing skills as well. And I think the best way really to get good at that is just mock interviews, but interviewing skills in context, it's basically saying, can I perform on the interview conditions? If I have to problem solve, engage with an interviewer under pressure, take advantage of hints and so on and so forth, context switch and so on and so forth on the interview pressure with the stakes being high, can I actually perform? You're not going to get good at that or even be able to assess how good you are doing that if you're just solving lead code problems in the comfort of your own home. And the last part I'll say in like an interview preparation strategy and also in the context of assessing how ready you are is are you optimized for any company specific um, uniqueness? So some companies ask some, like some companies don't ask dynamic programming questions, some companies ask some um, they have some unique interviewing styles. So the idea is you want to be optimized to perform on a, whatever conditions they throw at you. But to answer the core question, so is solving X amount of questions enough? I would say that let's think of this companies as lying on the spectrum. So the answer is it depends. Um, some companies recycle and repeat questions quite a lot. An example of that is like Meta. And the other extreme, there's companies that do not repeat, like that is literally their policy. And then you have companies in between. So you have a spectrum of companies. And what I'll propose is if you can handle the extremes, so companies that repeat and companies that don't repeat, my argument is you can basically have a strategy that works for these two, combine it into a mixed strategy and be able to handle pretty much any company's interviewing style. So let me quickly paint a rough picture of this spectrum. So we can look at the right end and think of this as representing, so on the extreme, right? Companies that have a policy where they don't repeat questions, Google being a perfect example of this. And if we have a look at the left end, we can say we reserve that for companies who, they don't necessarily have a policy of repeating. We, it's just very obvious that they do repeat a lot. So the probability of seeing a question that's tagged to their name, say on code, is really high. A good example of that is Meta. And we can say all the other companies are somewhere on the spectrum, um, some closer to the left and the right and so on. So for these companies here, I have not really placed them where they belong. Maybe Amazon, I'll say Amazon somewhere in the middle. They sort of repeat, they sort of don't repeat. You can't really be sure. But yeah, the others are somewhere on the spectrum. So just know where your target companies lie so you can um, tailor your approach accordingly. So let's look at group A, companies that repeat or recycle. We're using sort of meta as like the representative example of the extreme. But whatever I say here also applies to companies that are kind of close to that spectrum. But let's just look at the extreme end. So you can think of <clears throat> yourself as, you can think of the questions as skittles in the jar. And we could say for companies like this, they sort of have a question back, a question bank. They don't necessarily have one, but they sort of have a question bank in the sense that a lot of their questions seem to come from like a pool of questions and they tend to repeat. For sure, they can have variants, so be careful with that. But the idea is, let's say they have 400 questions. If you've solved all 400, provided you're not unlucky on the day and you know they throw new questions at you, your chances of seeing a repeat question are pretty much 100%. If you solved 200 out of 400, similar idea, probability, you solved half, so your chances of um, seeing a question you've seen before is 200 divided by 400, so one over two, 50% chance. Of course, this assumes that 
all questions are equally likely, which doesn't seem to be the case based on empirical data. And on LeetCode, you see that there's this idea of questions tagged, but there's a frequency. So what questions that seem to have been more, uh, occurred a bit more than others. Obviously, this is based on the people that are actually reporting this information. And this is also assuming that the data being used is accurate and LeetCode aren't just making things up. Instead of the Skittles jar example I just gave, it's probably more like a Skittles jar but some questions seem more likely to occur so you can depict them as skittles that are jumping out of the jar they seem more likely to to be picked right and i just want to stress i'm not saying any company has a question bank i'm saying it appears like they do companies are always free to you know retire questions and add new questions having said that there's some things you need to be careful about so the forgetting curve is one of them i'm not going to dive into this I already have a video on this on the channel, but what I'll stress is the human brain is like a sieve and as you put information in, some of it is being lost unless you take special steps to retain. This idea of learning things and making sure they actually stick, not that you solve 200 problems and you try and like revisit them and then you don't remember anything. Did you really achieve anything? So you want to be very wary of taking one step forward, but multiple steps back. The idea that you're, you're, you're like trying to hit your target and number of questions solved so you can increase the chances you have a repeat, which improves your chances of, you know, kind of passing. But what if you're just forgetting all the ones you've um, done? So you're doing plus one, minus two, plus one, minus five. Are you really making progress overall? So please be wary of that. This is a common thing I see people um, do that is, is suboptimal. Another thing to be wary of is autopilot. And I just want to stress, I'm not encouraging memorization. What we're trying to do is be a bit tactical and strategic. We know some companies repeat. It makes sense that we want to get familiar with the kind of things they ask because it'll help on the interview day, especially like Meta, where they have really tight time constraints. Beware of autopilot. This idea that you see a question, it looks like something you've seen before, but might be different. And you might realize too late or not realize, and you, you're going in the wrong direction. Or there's a slight variant and you end up solving the problem you actually saw as opposed to the one being asked in a day. Another thing to be careful about. Um, there's a few more of these, um, but if you check out the video on cracking the meta loop, it covers all these strategies, all these pitfalls you should be aware of, so do check it out. Now to group B, the other extreme end, quite companies that pretty much don't repeat or rarely do, what strategy do you want to employ? How do you think about this in terms of preparing and assessing your interview readiness? For companies that rarely repeat, we can model their sort of question bank situation as there being a fountain of questions, infinite questions. Once a question comes out, it's gone, it's not coming back in the, in the jar. So the idea of solving tag questions like 100 to 100 isn't really reasonable. What you really want to be focusing on is having a strong foundation and being able to handle unfamiliar scenarios, applying the knowledge that your solid foundation, right? The solid um, foundation you've built up. But there's a bit more to it because in these kind of interviews, you do see problems in disguise. In fact, some of these companies are known to go out of their way to disguise problems because they're trying to avoid people just regurgitating answers, right? They really want to get people that can think. So they do care about the thought process. Real-time processing is important because sometimes you find they'll introduce a problem with some constraints and then change that constraint or, or you know, change some assumptions they present um, in the problem. So you have to be able to dynamically adapt to that in real time. Some of those ones, they, the interviewer expects to sort of collab with you, especially in these pair programming type interviews or pair problem solving interviews where they give you, they feed you information in drips and you have to be able to react to that information. So you can't get tunnel vision. You have to be cognitively flexible. Sometimes the problems are ambiguous and you kind of have to be good at all these things. And that's not something that, you know, solving lead code tag problems is going to help you. Maybe looking at the tag problems will give you an idea of the kind of questions that they ask, but it doesn't give you an idea of what the interview experience is. Um, so I definitely recommend doing mock interviews for these types. Um, obviously, after building your foundation, because mock interviews are a different ballgame from like solving things on lead code. You know, simple tasks can feel very difficult. 
and I'm just using this image as an analogy, you already know how to brush your teeth, but can you do that in space? And just in general, regardless of what spectrum your company belongs to, um, the general advice for getting interview ready is practicing under realistic conditions. There's this saying, practice makes perfect, but I would like to enhance that saying and say, practice under realistic conditions makes perfect. Similar to the meta video, there's also a guide for cracking Google. And you can think of this as also a guide that's probably applicable to any company that's really close to the end of the spectrum where they don't repeat questions, they care about the thought process and so on and so forth. There's obviously other guides, there's one for Amazon and there's some other useful videos on the channel you can check out that would help you. So at the outset of this video, I broke down interview prep or interview readiness into three parts, knowledge. What I'll say is we're quite sport for choice from a knowledge perspective. AI and all these online resources just, you know, has got you covered. Interviewing skills. This is where I'm strongly recommending mock interviews, like actual practice under realistic conditions. And then for company specific optimizations, you know, I've shared some references to um, YouTube videos on my channel, but I'll, I'll give you some more resources, at least on the Kodishing platform that can help you. So you can tick all these boxes and actually feel more confident about being interview ready. So right now the Kodishing site's homepage looks something like this. And if you look at the top menu bar, you can see a bunch of categories of areas we can help with. In fact, I'll just do a very, very quick demo. So you can just get an idea of the resources there that can help you. So looking at the top, the nav bar, the navigation bar, one of the areas I like to highlight are the diagnostics, so the diagnostic tests. You can see diagnostic tests and algorithms and data structures, system design. If you like production engineering stream, there's questions on networking operating systems. And you can do these tests, they're really quick, they're multiple choice. We make it hard for you to guess because you look at the question, you can say you don't know and skip, but if you do want to attempt, if you're wrong, we give you a penalty, but you can then you know, answer and you get an evaluation at the very end. So I'm just gonna skip. So you know what areas to focus on so you can prioritize. So there's a bunch of diagnostic tests, check them out. We have mock interviews. We got human in the loop interviews so you can get a coaching session or a mock interview or even a coached mock interview. That's where you get more real-time feedback. Um, tailor to your target company or just a general one so check check this part of the site out and there's also AI mock interviews we have some for company specific ones based on the real questions they've asked but you have an AI interviewer um, you can check that out as well if you want your CV optimized we've got that if you want more advice like company specific advice check out the blogs tips company specific tips and just general tips that will help you um, especially this one on reducing errors um, when you're coding on the pressure and in interviews, there's a technique that I discussed, check it out. Um, we also have this beta mode, um, learn mode with some courses, which you can check out. We have a crash course on system design and other topics, and we have workshops. If you're interested in coding and behavioral workshops or system design workshops, these are free, you can join. Um, it's part of our Discord community so if you scroll to the bottom of our website, the footer has a link to our Discord community, which you can join. We have close to 5,000 members and you find people on the same journey with you, people who've done the interview you're doing or people who are also preparing. You can exchange idea, thoughts and help each other, boost morale. You can even find study buddies. So curious to know what your thoughts are on this you know the spectrum I discussed and the companies at the extremes and the middle and the strategies kind of suggested what are your strategies do you have anything to add uh, do share in the comments and if you like this video hit the like button if you want to see more videos like this or solutions to system design problems or other content relevant to helping you you know land that nail that tech interview um, do hit the subscribe button share with your friends if you think they will benefit from it otherwise See you in the next video.